Hello everyone, my name is Stephen, and I'm a PhD student at the University of Birmingham. And I'm very happy to present to you our work, Transparent Synchronous Data Flow, a programming paradigm for data flow graphs. This is a work collaborated with Dan Kieker, who is my supervisor at Birmingham, and Coco Muroya, who is an assistant professor at RIMS Kyoto. So let's begin with a very brief introduction to data flow programming. In contrast to sequential programming, it models computation as directed graphs. So you create the data dependencies between some input, and when the input changes, uh, the changes will be propagated through the network. And then when you observe the output, you can get the changed uh, values. And because of the lack of control in the pure data flow graph, the computation is inherently parallel, which is very good for uh, modeling parallel computation and also distributed computation. A pure data flow graph also corresponds to the so-called straight line code, which is basically pure functional and recursion free programs. And this kind of programs gives you an easy and efficient implementation for automatic differentiation, which is very important in modern uh, machine learning frameworks. So different paradigm gives you different abstractions. For example, in streams programming, you have a data type stream, which can be seen as a function uh, from time to data. As for functional reactive programming, you have behaviors and events, which represents continuous and discrete time values, uh, respectively. And um, FRP is also history sensitive, uh, meaning that uh, you can produce, a, can produce a stream that depends on the past values of other streams. So this could be potentially inefficient because it means that you would have to remember all uh, the past produced values of a stream. Another paradigm uh, is called a self-adjusting computation, which does not have the concept of time, but instead provide you the abstractions of modifiables, which is similar to a cell in a spreadsheet. So SAC sacrifices history sensitivity, but it is efficient to implement. However, self-adjusting computation is actually intended for uh, incremental computation, so they don't have a direct support for circular dependencies. And most of these languages or libraries uh, exhibit this kind of model behavior, in which you have a model building mode where you create the graphs, and then you have a model execution mode where you run or you execute the graphs with certain inputs. And there is also a difference between explicit versus implicit lifting. So on the left-hand side, you have a program that requires the programmer to explicitly lift the operations in order to work on streams. And on the right hand side, you can simply use the, uh, the operations and the operators will be implicitly lifted to work on stream. So what we want to do is to have a language that creates strict line code transparently, a language that supports circular dependencies in a safe way, and a language that is easy to compile and it is efficient. And as a bonus, we also want to have a semantic frameworks that unifies, the com uh, unifies computation and also data flow graphs. And the difference between these two graphs will be discussed when we talk about the operational semantics. So here is a small example written in our language. And uh, the keywords in red color are the new operators that we introduced. So let's uh, go through this program line by line. So in the first line, we create a cell X, which is initialized by the value one and then we create another cell y, and after that, we create an immediate dependency m, which depends on both x and y. So the deref operator, you can think of it as uh, creating an edge from a cell. And the, next, and the next line, we have this link operator, which modifies the dependency of a cell. So in here, we modify the dependency of y to one plus x. And in the next line, we modify the dependency of x to y times 3. And now here we have a circular dependency. And in the next line, we have the step command. So what it does is actually reevaluates re all the cells by using the current values of other cells. So in this case, x should be uh, reevaluated to 1 times 3, and y should be reevaluated to 1 plus 1. And after that, we return the value m, which is basically 2 plus 3, which is 5. 
Okay, so let's take a look at a slightly more complicated example, which is the sieve of Aristophanes, which is to produce a stream of prime numbers. But first, we need to define some uh, helper functions. So, for, so the first one is the from n functions, which take an integer n and to produce a stream of natural numbers that starting from n. And then the next function is the filter function, which checks if i is equal to n or if i is not divisible by n. So this filter function can be seen as actually a, a layer of a sieve. Okay, so now by using the helper functions, we can actually create the program. So we first create an input stream by using from n2, which is uh, actually a stream of natural numbers starting from 2. And then we create a cell, sif, which is initialized by the first layer of the sif, which actually uh, filter out any numbers that is divisible by 2. After that, we then create a delayed input stream. So this is required because we have to synchronize uh, between the sif and the input stream. And finally, we can create a stream of prime numbers uh, by saying that if the sif is true, then we return the current value of the delayed input stream. Otherwise, we just return zero. But this actually does not uh, give you a stream of prime numbers because it only has one layer of the sieve. And this is where the next functions uh, come from. So the next function, it first uh, performed the step command, which uh, propagated changes uh, within the network. And then the second line, we actually modify the dependency of the sieve. So the left arrows here is uh, it's actually the same as the link operator. And then the root operator here returns the dependency of a cell. And then the peak operator uh, returns the current value of a string, which is a constant value. So, um, so before the next function is called, so this is the original graph, which the sif has only one layer. And then after the step function, uh, we add an extra layer to the sif. And after performing a couple of uh, the next function, then we can observe the result. And indeed, it does produce a stream of prime numbers. So this example also shows you how uh, graphs are actually modified in runtime. So in the second part of this talk, I would like to talk about the operational semantics informally. The operational semantics of TSD is based on a graph abstract machine which is called the Dynamic Geometry of Interaction Machine. It is a semantic framework for programming languages uh, with different uh, evaluation strategies. For example, you can do core by need or core by value lambda calculus on it. And under this framework, uh, a program can be represented by an abstract syntax graph. And then the execution is represented by a token running on the ASG, collecting uh, information and to guide how the graph should be rewritten. And when the token comes back, it will carry the return value and also it will leave a graph that should uh, correspond to the return value. So here is a very simple example. So on the right hand side, you have the abstract syntax graph. So the yellow notes represents the construct in lambda calculus, the lambda abstraction and also application. And then the blue notes represent the constructs uh, in linear logic. So the C node represents the contraction of variables, which is basically the sharing of values. And then the exclamation node uh, represents a value in the graph. And then you have the purple nodes, which represents uh, the primitive data and also their operations. Okay, so let's actually take a look at how the graph is evaluated. So the token is represented by a red edge in the graph. And um, the right-hand side of this graph is actually uh, the term 1 plus 2. So the token first evaluates the uh, argument 2 and 1. And then when it comes back to the application look, uh, it will perform a beta reduction, which connects the bound variable to the argument 1, uh, just like this. And after that, it will perform similar things uh, in the next application look. And then we have the graph 1 plus 2. And in several steps, uh, when the tokens come back to the plus node, we will have a graph 1 plus 2, and after that it will be rewritten to a constant 3. And now we are going to evaluate x plus x. 
So now, as you can see, the constant 3 is shared by uh, the arguments as to the two application nodes. So at this point, we will have to copy the value of 3, and then it will be used by um, the different application nodes. And after that, this graph is actually representing uh, the term 3 plus 3. And the evaluation procedure is basically the same as before. And so after a few uh, steps, we will get the graph 3 plus 3. And after several steps, it will be rewritten to 6. So this is what we meant by computation graph a graph that has computation in it, as opposed to a data flow graph which only has data flow information. So the operation semantics of our TSD is basically that of a DGOIM plus data flow features. So data flow graph creation uh, is basically the same as suppressing certain rewrites, and graph execution is basically a token traversing a static graph without any rewrites in it. So here is a small example showing uh, how graphs is created in the semantics. So the red node here, uh, it's the cell creation node. So after a series of evaluation, we will have a graph like this. And when the token comes back to the M node, it will create uh, the cell. So this cell is uh, different from the normal values because it is not going to be copied. And you can see that the cell is now shared by the two application nodes, but the evaluation doesn't actually copy it, which actually preserves the data flow information within the computation graph. And after several uh, evaluations, we will finally get a graph like this. And the graph is not going to be rewritten no more. And when the tokens comes back, it will return the values 1 plus 1. And this example shows you the semantics of the link operator. So in here, we have a cell x, which is initialized by 1. And then this is the link node, basically. And the right-hand side is going to be the new dependency. And then the left-hand side is the, uh, it's the cell that are going to be modified. So the tokens go to the right-hand side to evaluate the new dependency. And after that, it will go to the left-hand side in order to retrieve the cell. And when the token comes back, uh, to the link node, and um, the dependency will be uh, relinked, just like this. So now the uh, cell X is going to be depending on itself plus one. And the last example shows you uh, the semantics of the step command. So on the right hand side we have a graph, and um, you have the cell Y here, and then you have the cell X. And the S node here is the step command. So when it is uh, being evaluated, it will spawn uh, several tokens on the data flow graphs uh, above the cells. And then this token will evaluate the dependency uh, in parallel, and when it uh, comes back to the cell, it will uh, modify the content of the cell. And after that, <clears throat> the um, S node will return and rewritten uh, as a Boolean value. So in here, true means that there are updates in the cell. So we have also proved that the language is deterministic and confluence, and also the language is uh, safe and efficient. And other than the uh, programming languages mentioned earlier in the introduction, we also took a lot of inspiration from synchronous languages such as Lustro and Lucid Synchron. So the difference is that um, these languages are very stream-oriented, and the graphs are created by mutual recursive definition. So one of the big differences is how the graph is modified at runtime. So in Lucid Synchron, they have this kind of concept of a stream of functions. So you can imagine that um, with different functions at different time, uh, the graph is going to be reconfigured. As opposed to TSD, when the step command is executed, uh, the graph has to be static. But you can still modify the graph by uh, linking the dependency of the graph in between steps. So here are some things that can be done in the future. For example, an optimization framework uh, that has automatic uh, differentiation on the data flow graph models, or official debugging tools uh, that works on the semantics. 
And also because the data flow graph is pure, we can actually distribute the cells across different machines. So in conclusion, TSD is actually a synthesis of uh, many other paradigms. It is transparent, high rhoda, and imperative. And the data flow graph is parallel, deadlocked, free, space safe, and time safe. It also supports feedback loop in a safe way, and it also allows to be modified in runtime. So here are some links to the visualizer and also a link to the naive uh, OCaml implementation. So um, yeah, thank you for listening.